Well, Chris, Damon, congratulations. You guys are moving forward in the third and final round of our competition. Now, gentlemen, this last round, we're going to be sending you back to your home forges to build one of three iconic weapons from our Forge and Fire vault. We've got the Pondot, the Boazande, and the Kelawang. Now, gentlemen, we got to keep with the casino theme. <laughs> so we're going to spin the Wheel of Forging again. But here's the deal. If you don't like where you land, you have an option to press your luck and spin again. But those four days total the 35 hours. If you choose to spin again, we're going to be deducting two hours from that total time. Ready to find out what you're building at home? Let's do it. Let's do it. Chris, you're up first. All right. All right, Chris, you landed on the pond dot. How you feeling? I'll keep it. I don't want to get that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. The Pandat is a two-handed war sword native to the Dayaks of Borneo in Indonesia. Exclusively used in combat, the weapon's single edge blade was uniquely angled and featured a wide flat tip. The ornate design made it very effective lethal weapon, delivering devastating chops through the armor of an opponent. This fierce sword was featured in season three of Fortune Fire, with the smiths both turned in beautiful weapons, but ultimately the better balanced blade won the title. Damn, you ready? Let's go. The Kellawang. So of course I get the Kellawang. I don't have a quench tank that would fit something like that. The odds of, of it landing on Kellawang again are not too high, so I'm, I'm willing to bet to get one of the other two. Hit me again. All right, that means we're gonna be taking two hours off your 35 hours. You will have 33 hours to build whatever I land on. The Boazande, you happy with it? Oh yeah. The Boazande sword is a Central African weapon that features a long pierced ricasso and a wide leaf-shaped blade that tapers to a steep, sharp tip. The razor sharp edges were designed to deliver devastating stabs and slashes into an enemy. The Boazande was previously seen in season seven of Fortune Fire, where while both smiths faced challenges achieving the width of this weapon, victory went to the lighter, more comfortable sword. All right, Chris, you're gonna have 35 hours to build your Pondot. Damon, you've got 33 hours to build your Boazande. Gentlemen, don't forget, these are high stakes. The house is putting up $10,000 in the title of Forge of Fire champion for the winner. Good luck, we'll see you in four days. Good luck, man. Good. My name is Chris Gardner. I am 37 years old from Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm doing a sword with 327 layer billet. Looks like I have enough steel. I'm pretty happy with how it's going. It's looking pretty good so far. Something goes wrong with the quench. That could basically destroy my blade. Planning for the worst, hoping for the best. All right, here we go. I get it over to the quench tank and it comes out straight. That's good, it's hard. This blade is a little awkward. It's a weird shape. I need a specific edge on this thing that's gonna hold up during these tests and still stay sharp. Damon, he's an excellent smith. Can't wait to see what he brings, but you know, I hope mine's just a, a little bit better. <laughs> My name's Damon Clark. I am 45 years old. Started doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu about 12 years ago, so I think that part of the reason I'm a pretty decent bladesmith is the discipline and the strength it takes to be in Jiu Jitsu. It's looking good so far. I'm gonna draw out the, the basic blade shape for now. I gotta worry about getting parameter lengths. We'll just see how, how things go. So 243 layers, that's what I was shooting for. I really like the look of bronze, so I'm gonna put a bronze guard and pommel. So I've got my pommel tapped, and now I need to thread my tank. Shoot, I don't think this is gonna work. I see that the threads are not right. With the threads as shallow as they are, it's not gonna grab the pommel and it's not gonna be tight. I build a new pommel, I get it on the handle, everything looks good, it's tight. Well, it's gonna work just fine. Now I'm ready to start moving forward. It looks great, the, the pattern's really showing really well. So now it's time to get the final edge on it and get this sucker sharp. Losing two hours didn't really change my plan of action. She's a winner. I feel really good about what I made. Blade Smiths, welcome to the keel test. I'm gonna take your weapon and deliver some lethal strikes on this big carcass. 
Because these are two different kinds of weapons with different designs. They may cut differently or perform differently, but overall, the feeling and the way I wield them should be the same. Chris, you're up first. Ready for this? Yeah, let's do it. All right, Chris, let's talk about your pandat here. When I picked it up, it felt so light. A little forward heavy, but that's what it's supposed to be because it's a chopper. Your handle construction is smooth. I can fit both hands perfectly there, no extra space. Overall, sir, with a function of a chopper like this, it will kill. Thank you. Damon, you're up next. You ready, sir? Yes, sir. All right, Damon, let's talk about your Bobozande here. Your handle construction fits my hand perfectly. I like the palm swell there because it locks my hand in. Your edges are sharp. They cut deeply and thrust nicely into this carcass. Overall, sir, your Bobozande, it will kill. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our strength test, the porcelain pot chop. It's gonna be a lot of fun to see what your blades do to the pots, but I'm more concerned about what the pots do to your blades and their edges. And Chris, you're up first, you ready to go? Yes. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Chris, you survived, good job. You got a little bit of glinting. And we got a couple slight rolls, but they're very minimal. Everything's still straight, sharp, sturdy. Good job. Thank you. Damon, you ready to go? Can we just talk this out? No. Damon, you survived, good job. Some minor glinting, a couple of little rolls in the edge, but I mean, still overall a very sharp blade. Nice job. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, this is a sharpness test, the vine slice. To find out how sharp your weapons are, I'm gonna take your weapon and slash you these vines. Chris, you're up first. You ready? I'm ready. Right. All right, Chris, let's talk about your pandat here. Your edges easily cut through the vine, sir. Overall, your pandat, little cut. Thank you. All right, Damon, the final gamble. Are you ready, sir? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Damon. The edges are sharp and cut cleanly through the vines. Your weapon too, sir. You will cut. Thank you. Well, well, well. Both of your weapons performed extremely well in all three of our tests. But in this competition, we have to have a winner, which means one of you has to go home. And the winner of today's Fortune Fire competition is... Chris, congratulations. Now, Damon, unfortunately, your blade just didn't make the cut, and Jay's gonna tell you why. Damon, you got everything in the world to be proud of. They tested equally, fit and finish, and the finer details is what it came down to, and Chris just squeaked a little bit ahead of you, that's it. Cool. Damon, up against any other blade, it would've won, but unfortunately, you did not come out with the win today. I'm gonna have to ask you to please step off the forge floor, man. Thanks for having me, guys. Good job, buddy. Yeah, man. I know that with what they told me about my weapon, that there really wasn't a loser here. I'm taking home just a fantastic experience. This competition is amazing. I am humbled by this. It's been wonderful. Chris, you are the Forge and Fire champion, and you're going to be taking home a check for $10,000, man. Congratulations. Oh.
Thank you guys, thank you so much. I'm like in disbelief. This title of Forge and Fire champion means a lot to me. It's something that I can always take with me. I am the Forged and Fire champion!